Can you do anything with this? There's a button. You press the red light. Red light's good. Yeah. 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 Well, I appreciate everyone's kindness. I feel like I feel more of a recipient than a, than a giver right now. I'll, I'll try to give now. Uh, but I really appreciate everyone showing a lot of kindness uh, to me and and uh, have a lot to report back yeah. in Delaware. I appreciate, I was saying this to Brother Al, and I, I really appreciate your uh, your faithfulness and uh, your your desire to consider one another. Amen. And 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 in considering one another, provoke one another to love and, and good deeds, and, mm -hmm. and to not forsake not forsake assembling together. And when you assemble together, not forsake it then. You know, not 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 just be here, but to be here and provoking one another. Mm -hmm. and, and I have a been a partaker of that, so I just I'm grateful for you. And well, we're talking about the circumcision of Christ, and so we're talking about the eternal purpose of God. We're talking about mm -hmm. uh, what God is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be in Romans chapter 4. I want to read from verses 7 to 11. It says, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven yeah. and whose sins are covered. Mm -hmm. And blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now cometh this blessedness upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. Mm -hmm. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Yeah. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Mm -hmm. Not in circumcision, mm -hmm. but in uncircumcision. Mm -hmm. And he received the sign of circumcision, mm -hmm. a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, mm -hmm. though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them, unto them also. Amen. Amen. We find ourselves as them also. <laughs> Well, God, so God is doing something. He's doing a great work. And, you know, when thinking about the eternal purpose of God, a couple things come to mind. And obviously just a, a work and God is, God is working. And, and this work that is being done, it's being done to His glory. Uh, so when we think about His purpose, we're thinking about something being done to His glory. It's a purpose that's been established since before the foundation of the earth. And, uh, and it's an so it's an eternal purpose. And this purpose brings blessing to God and to men. And uh, to those who are called according to this purpose. This purpose involves the destruction of all that which is against God, including the arch foe, the devil. And this purpose of God also involves bringing many sons to glory and those sons being conformed into the image of, of his firstborn, so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Uh, and I just want to state some of these things so we, we want to look at... Every time you look at something in the scripture, you want to look at it in view of what God's doing, in view of how, how does this fit in with the eternal purpose of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this, this purpose brings us into a new heaven and a new earth, where the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall be their God, and they shall be his people. Mm -hmm. This purpose is a large purpose, it's an exceeding great purpose, and the benefits of it will extend to the uttermost parts of the earth, even unto all nations, and, and, and even further than that. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, yeah. both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So Amen. it is this purpose, this eternal purpose, yeah. that, is, that has governed the working of God throughout, throughout the course of history and, and throughout the ages. It, it wasn't just a plan or a good idea. It's actually governed what he does. Mm -hmm. You know, we think about this might be a good idea to do something. And, but this, this is governed after the counsel of his will. He, he works. You know, he, these, these things have governed what he's done. He's effectively working all things after the counsel of his own will. He's carrying out this eternal purpose. Amen. And in order for this purpose to be realized and experienced and partaken of by men, we must be changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. We must have our sins put away. Amen. We must have righteousness imputed unto us. And if this is going to happen, we must be separated from that which is offensive to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we must be circumcised with a circumcision made without hands and the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Amen. And so we really what I want to discuss is 
is uh, the necessity of the circumcision of Christ and, and, and the things that spring forth from it, the effects of it, the implications of that. Um, as we've been, well, we've had a great time so far. Amen. Now some things just, there are some things that just simply must be removed. Yeah. They just, just throw them out. And uh, those things in life which are useless, they have no utility, they're invaluable, uh, they're of no consequence. They, the, the best thing to do with them is just put them off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. and, and because those things, are, they're not neutral in our lives. They, they become a hindrance. If yeah. and so, so you want to, you wanna, as, as much as you can, you just want to throw those things away. And, uh, you know, I thought about that in view of the circumcision of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's some things that you, they're just they're unprofitable for us, so it needs to be cut off. Things like uh, the, their, their entanglements, their obstacles. Uh, that prevent maximum production from being realized. So things yeah. like the cares of this world and the lusts of other things mm -hmm. that cause people to be unfruitful. These things just need to be forsaken. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, they're like, you know, when salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. Yeah, that's right. You just throw it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they must be thrown out in order to be overcome. And this is, uh, this is precisely what has been done with the body of the sins of the flesh. This is, it's not profitable for us. We just cut it off and put it, put it off. Mm -hmm. And so this is what is done. And they could not be changed or reformed it had to be put off by the circumcision of Christ. So I want to talk a little bit about circumcision as, as we already have and how it was prefigured in the covenant of circumcision with Abraham. And uh, the circumcision of the flesh of the foreskin continued with Abraham's descendants even as part of the law as we discussed. And the circumcision of the flesh, uh, it pictured what was, what was really needed for men. It was, you know, it was a picture. And... Uh, but the circumcision was ceremonial. It was, it was outward. It's, it's described as being outward in the flesh. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we know that no amount of fleshly ordinance is able to change men in the, the, where the, the true problem lies, which mm -hmm. is in our heart. And so yeah. right. this, this was a picture, but it, but it pictured something greater. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so therefore the command, the command is still issued even to people who were circumcised. Now, I mean, they were, they, were, they were told to be circumcised, but the command goes out to them. Mm -hmm circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked like it was it was to them and what praise God there was also a promise issued yeah that, that said the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul that thou mayest live mm -hmm. and I really I really like that God does things with a purpose he mm -hmm. this is why he was going to circumcise our hearts so that you may love the Lord your God with all your heart like this is it was to an end and let's talk about uh, imputation. You know, when I think about these things um, and the eternal purpose of God, what, what exactly God is working out? Why is it nece uh, a necessity that the circumcision of Christ and, uh, you know, fellowship is, God desires fellowship. He, he desires to be in communion with his people, not just with communion with anybody. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship has light with darkness, right? And so, yeah, right. so there, there comes in the, 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 the being conformed into the image. He doesn't just want a crowd of people. He wants a crowd of people that are like him. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll love the same things he loves and hates the same things he hates. And so fellowship requires oneness. Can, can two walk together except they be agreed? Can a, can a man walk with God except he be like him? I, well, no. God is just. God is holy. We mm -hmm. want to talk about who God is. So he is of pure eyes than to behold evil and cannot look, at, look on iniquity. He is the one with whom we have to do. This is who God is. He is the one with whom we will all give an account. Mm -hmm. And he is that one that all have offended. Yeah. And from whom each of us have, had gone astray. Man. Well, we've come back to the shepherd and bishop for ourselves. So. Yeah. Amen. Well, this being the case, there was an entrance of sin and a fall of man. By one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all had sinned. Mm -hmm. And we were sometimes foolish, yeah. and disobedient, and deceived, yeah. and serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating, hating one another. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is God's account of man. Yeah. Indeed, the whole world lieth in wickedness. And while it is true that the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, and neither is his ear heavy, that it cannot hear, it is also true that their iniquities have separated yeah. between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, that he will not hear. Righteousness was required for fellowship with God, and we were without it. Mm -hmm. How could such a people be just with God? 
What could be done? Man, having their understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that was in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling had given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanliness with greediness, man was bad and he was getting worse. That's kind of where we, that's where we were. So I ask you, could a law help such people? Could, could a command help, help this situation? If man could just muster up the will and the fortitude to do righteousness, mm -hmm. he could save himself, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with man, salvation is impossible. Yeah, okay. But not with God. Yeah. Man could not co correct his own condition. There was no amount of laws or commandments that could bring about life in the dead bones of men. Mm -hmm. The defiling capacity of sin, well, I think they're underestimated. Yeah, and they're okay. staggered. Uh -huh. Sin defiles. Yeah, okay. It corrupts. Mm -hmm. It makes you worse. Mm -hmm. And it leads to further unrighteousness. It causes corruption. The far-reaching effects of sin could not be countered by a law, even if it was the law of Moses. The law of God. Mm -hmm. The impotence of the flesh would prevent any salvation that required it to work. So truly, truly I say to you, the, the flesh is weak and it profits nothing. Mm -hmm. Man. <clears throat> well, we've had good news preached to us. <clears throat> The cross of Christ. I think that imputation is best seen in, in view of the cross of Christ. Yeah, okay. We're going to talk about imputation. We want to talk about the cross. Mm -hmm. uh, for it was, in, it was there that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Yeah. For he hath made him uh -huh. to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when the Lord caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon him, it was then that he was circumcised. Yeah. He, he was cut off mm -hmm. from the land mm -hmm. of the living. Mm -hmm. And for a small moment, mm -hmm. God had forsaken him, but with great mercies, he, he was recovered. You know, so we want, to, we want to see, we want to, we want to look at our own circumcision in Christ in view of that. In view mm -hmm. of that be, being cut off, we, yeah. we participate. We participate in that. Yeah. Uh, so in, in order to be separated from sin, and it's really, we're talking about a separation here. Yes. Uh, so in order to be separated from sin, in order for man to have this righteousness imputed to him, it is of first importance that sin is not imputed mm -hmm. to him. As it is written, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered, and blessed is man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. The circumcision of Christ was necessary yeah. in order for righteousness to be imputed Amen. unto us. Amen. 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 The body of the sins of the flesh, it was a sort of cancer that needed, it just needed mm -hmm. to be cut off. Yeah. And, uh, well, praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God, has been. In order for righteousness to be imputed, sin had to be put away. Man must participate in this putting away, mm -hmm. in this being cut off, in this circumcision made without hands. And just as Christ bore our sins in his body on the tree, mm -hmm and was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So we too have been buried with him by baptism into death, have died to sin, that the life we now live, we live to God. Mm -hmm. It's appropriate. It's appropriate then yeah. mm -hmm. that for us to live, and we live in accord with the life that we've been given from God. It's just, it's just, a, it's just reasonable yeah. mm -hmm. that now you're going to live that way. And it's, it, well, it's inappropriate to live according to the body of sin, which has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. It just, this makes no sense. Therefore, let not sin reign in your mortal body that you obey its lust, the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God. As those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but you're under grace. Mm -hmm. This is just sound reasoning. Yeah. You know, when, when you just, when you read, when you study through the scriptures, you see these things, they're, they're fitting together, and well, this just makes sense to us. Yeah. No, no more is this, is this confusing. This is just sound reasoning. Yeah. Being made right. We're talking about imputation. We're talking about being made righteous. Yeah. What, a, what, a, what a necessity and what a blessing. Mm -hmm. Righteousness could not be imputed where sin was yet imputed. Mm -hmm. But where sin is not imputed, well, then righteousness can come. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where sin abounded, great, grace did much more abound. Yeah. Where the circumcision of Christ has been experienced, there'll be a, I, I like to think of the reign of righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Because the righteousness reigns. Mm -hmm. And uh, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign unto righteousness, unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. It's just going to reign. Mm -hmm. So 
So man didn't need, man didn't, we didn't need laws, we had laws. We, we needed help. <laughs> we, need, we needed someone to help us. And, but we have such a one. We needed a deliverer. We, need, we needed someone to take away that which had defiled us. Uh, we needed life from above. Mm -hmm. We needed life from some, some other place. We didn't have it within ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. We needed it to come to us. Uh, man, man needed the cause of death within him to be taken out of the way. He, well, he needed to be circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. Uh -huh. By the circumcision of Christ. For if he was ever going to be righteous, yeah. he needed that righteousness to be given to him. If we ever had hope of righteousness, we need, we need that to be imputed to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A righteousness apart from the law, a righteousness that is of God, that's what we needed. And the only one who could give it, well, is the Lord our righteousness. It's no surprise to us, it's no surprise to us that the Apostle Paul counted all things to be lost. Mm -hmm. In view of these things, that's, 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 not, a, that's not a shocker. Mm -hmm. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is of God mm -hmm. by faith. For God has commanded... Drop down, ye heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Mm -hmm. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation. Salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. Mm -hmm. I, the Lord, have created. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, then victory can be had. Then, then grace can be accessed. Uh, for God, for if God justifies, who is there to condemn? If God is for us, who, who is there that is against us? Let us hear the words of the Lord that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. Amen. Amen. I really have been, uh, have been blessed by, in, in these past couple of years, in my walk with the Lord, to, well, just to see more of God. And to see more of the working of God that mm -hmm. genders up faith, and mm -hmm. I, I can really, I can really, I can, I can trust in the God who's working salvation in the midst of the earth, and it's not yeah. dependent upon me, but it's a, dependent upon Him. And I really like how this fits in with the circumcision of Christ, mm -hmm. one made without hands, as we, as we've discussed, mm -hmm. and and by faith in the operation of God. Yeah. By yeah. faith, by faith in His work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some birds say in the working of God. Mm -hmm. Our salvation hinges upon the work of another. Amen. We require something to be done mm -hmm. that no man can do. Mm -hmm. This work in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh is something that has to be done without hands, that is by God. Mm -hmm. A salvation that is based upon Christ's ability to satisfy the Father. Christ's ability to purge our sin. Christ's ability to purify the people. Christ's ability to bring us to God. Christ's ability to make intercession for us. And Christ's ability to save us to the uttermost. Well, that's, that's a sure salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, we... That, you, can have, you can have great hope and peace in that. Mm -hmm. Our salvation from start to finish is by the grace of God and through our faith in His work. Amen. And as the children of Abraham, we too are fully persuaded that what He has promised, He is also able, able to perform. Amen. 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 Well, let's talk about these implications. Let's, let's talk about what all this means. What, mm -hmm. what are the effects of such a work? Mm -hmm. What's, what's going to happen because of this? This circumcision, the circumcision of Christ... It wasn't a covenant given in, uh, to Abraham and to the seed of his flesh, but it's, it's for all the Abraham's seed, those, those who walk in the steps of the faith of Father Abraham. Mm -hmm. uh, this circumcision is for all nations. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, mm -hmm. or upon the uncircumcision also? Yeah. Well, it, become, it, it cometh upon them also. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I really, Abraham, Abraham, his name was changed to Abraham. Mm -hmm. It was Abram. Exalt, high Father, Exalted Father. It was changed to Abraham, the father of a multitude, the father of many nations. Why? In view of this, yeah. he's the father of a multitude. He's going to be the father of a multitude of nations, of many nations of those who believe. You see, and so this is, I, boy, I love names. I love, I, love, I, love, I love naming children. I want to have more children just to give them names. You know, I just... <laughs> I, because, I, you know, God is this way. He'll give people names because of the work they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Abraham, the father of many, of many nations, that's, that's who he is. God spoke to Abraham, saying, My covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Neither shall thy name be any more called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For the father of many nations have I made thee. And upon changing his name from exalted father to a father of multitude, 
God gave him the covenant of circumcision. Mm -hmm. This right would, would separate those of the fleshly lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from all others, from the, from the world. But it wasn't that circumcision was the means of justification, as many had supposed. But circumcision did not justify Abraham. It was a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while being yet circumcised, uncircumcised. Thus it was not, nor has it ever been, that the circumcision of the Israelites that justified them, it was their faith. You know, and that's the point. Not, not of those of the circumcision only, but those of the circumcision who walk according to the, to the steps of the, of the faith of Father Abraham. Mm -hmm. And these all obtained a good report through faith. You know, the, the, that's, that's really all that matters. To, to, to obtain a good report by God, mm -hmm. we, give, we give a good report of God, mm -hmm. but to think that he could give a good report of us mm -hmm. through our faith. Amen. What a thought. Yeah. <clears throat> Abraham's the father of all believers. The father of them that believe, though they be not circumcised, and the father of the circumcision to them that not only of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of his faith. So in accordance with his name, he's the father of many nations of believers. Well, what of, what of these many nations? What of these others? What of them also? They're fellow citizens. The Gentiles, while being wild branches, are grafted into the natural olive tree. Mm -hmm. They're partakers of the holy root, and they also are holy. Mm -hmm. Amen. They are, made, they are made one body mm -hmm. with those of the circumcision who believe. But not only one body, mm -hmm. but a new. <laughs> you know, that, that God would reconcile them both to himself but in one new man. Yeah. So he's bringing Jew and Gentile together in one, but he's also, he's also making them new. Mm -hmm. You said there's two parts there. He's, they're one, mm -hmm. but they're new. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and both are necessary for us. Yes. <clears throat> they are risen with him as the, as the true circumcision. Mm -hmm. We are the circumcision. Amen. Who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and put no confidence in the flesh. Their faith is in the working of God. To them the purpose of God is fulfilled, and the blessing of Abraham has come upon them, whether Jew or Gentile, and being made a partaker of the Holy Spirit, and being justified from all things from which they could not be justified from the law of Moses. Not worship on this mountain or that, but in spirit and in truth. See, all these things come into play. All these things are fitting together as they, as they participate in the circumcision of Christ and become made, they're made new and made one. Let's talk about blessedness. Cometh this blessedness. Mm -hmm. The promise of Abraham, remember the promise of Abraham, I mean, this is one of blessing. And this is the nature of God is enough. Mm -hmm. It's God's nature, to, he, his desire to bless. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know, that may be very simplistic to you, but this has escaped me for a long time. I kind of viewed God as, at any moment, he was ready to strike me down and stop on me if I did one thing wrong. Mm -hmm. I see that God is a God of blessing. He's mm -hmm. looking for a reason not to condemn. He's looking for a reason to bless. Like yeah. he, this is his nature. This is what he, want, he desires to do. Uh -huh. He spoke to Abraham, mm -hmm. and he spoke of blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 not, and, no, and this blessing is no small matter. That's right. Yeah. I mean, in, in you and in, and in your seed, all the nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Like this is his desire to pour out this blessing. Mm -hmm. God, God is, God is uh, benevolent. Uh, he's gracious, he's compassionate, he's abounding in loving kindness and truth. This is who God is. Yeah. See, you know a God like this, you want to draw near to God like that. Yeah, right. you, want to, you want to be with a God like that. Well, that's, that's, who, that's the God we have. That's how he is. Yeah. What prevented the great outpouring of blessing aforetime? This is the sin of man, is, what, is kind of what prevented it. Mm -hmm. But in and through the operation of God and the circumcision of Christ, the body of sins is put away with... What is God going to do with such a people? What is God going to do with such a... What is God going to do with you when he takes your sin away? Hmm. Like he's taken that which, had, which, which caused you to be offensive to him. He's taken it out of the way. Mm -hmm. which, which, which led to your condemnation. He's taken that out of the way. Mm -hmm. The very thing that prevented you from him. The very thing that prevents you from fellowship with him. The very thing that prevents you from receiving blessing from him. That's been taken out of the way. So what is he going to do? What is he going to do with, with, a, with a people who are, who, to whom he does not impute sin? Hmm. Well, he's going to make them heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, he's, he's going to open up the floodgates and pour out blessings <laughs> upon them. And all them which are Christ, they're bid to come and with joy draw water out of the wells of salvation. This is, see, it's been opened up now. Yeah. 
There's, there's no reason to be timid about this. Let's just go. Go get it. Like, you know, someone brought up the, uh, the, the great salvation that was brought about in, uh, in I think it was uh, Second Chronicles and, and Jehoshaphat. And, you know, what, what they were to do when he saw the three armies coming towards him. And the battle's not ours. It, it's, the battle's the Lord's. And we don't know what to do, but our eyes upon you. And these, these armies came together and they struck each other down. And they came up and they just watched and they saw their salvation. And then they spent three days collecting the spoils of the victory. We, we're, just, we're collecting now. Yeah. You see, the, the, the victory has been won. The, the, the battle's been won. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the sin has been put away. This yeah. has been handled. So it's just go collect the spoils of victory. It may take you a little bit more than three, than three days. But, but you, you, got, you, can, you can gather these things up. And I, mm -hmm. boy, that's appealing to me. I want to go. So yeah, I need a bigger basket. That's yeah. all there is. Yeah. These, these people, they've been given for Christ's sake. Yeah. For his sake, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Mm -hmm. And they've been given all things pertaining to life and godliness. When their sins taken away, this is what we'll give them. All things. Mm -hmm. All things are yours. They're being transformed into the image of Christ by the Spirit of the Lord. And Jesus Christ being the for firstborn of these brethren. They stand in grace. They're partakers of the powers of the world to come. And partakers of the Holy Spirit. They're seated with Christ in heavenly places. They've been made to be kings and priests unto God, and they shall reign on the earth. Well, I'm just glad that the blessing doesn't stop there. Yeah. I, I have not seen, mm -hmm. nor ear heard all that God has prepared for them, but they shall see him just as he is. And I, you know, I, I am your exceeding great reward. Yeah. We can talk about all the blessings, we can talk about the grace, we can talk about the peace, we can talk about all these things, but, but it's God himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the exceeding great. Right? Right. You know, when it all comes down to it, we want to be with him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. They shall see him just as he is. And I have come, I suppose we may say this, I have come, my eyes have seen it, and behold, the half has not been told to me. You know, we, we've heard a lot about who God is. We've heard a lot about the blessings that come. We've heard a lot. A lot has been revealed. Mm -hmm. But when we're there, there's, there's more. Yeah. You know, there's more to come. Thy wisdom and thy prosperity exceeded the fame of what we've heard. Yes, amen. What do we have? What do we have because of all that? Well, we have access. Mm -hmm. Access to the Father. You know, Job recognized the holiness of the Lord and the frailty of man and cried out, He is not a man as I am. That I should answer him, and we should come together in judgment. Neither is there a daysman betwixt us that might lay his hand upon us both. For when men were still in their sins and void of the righteousness of God, they were, they were not, we weren't able to approach him. We didn't have access. We would hide in the garden. You know, we would run and hide. Men would ask for rocks to cover them. Mm -hmm. See, Job knew that he needed a mediator. In order to be able to approach God in confidence, well, Job, we'd like you to know that we have such a high priest. Yeah. Who is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens and minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not men. We have access. Yeah. For now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes far up and made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who, who have made both one and who broke down the middle wall of partition between us and came and preached peace to us who are far off and preached and preach peace to them who are near for in him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. And seeing that we have such a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but it was in all points tempted as like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of We have access. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Christ has not entered into the holy place and made with hands which is a figure of the true, but in the heaven itself, now who appear in the presence of God for us in Christ, we have access. Mm -hmm. We have access to the Father. We, and not only access, we, we have access, but we have acceptance. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're accepted. We're accepted in the Beloved. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this blessedness, this blessedness of, of acceptance, I don't know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested in this. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in being accepted of God, and I'm interested in being accepted of the people of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> This blessing reaches into the heavens and to the earth, this acceptance. Mm -hmm. Our reconciliation is to God, but it's also to those who are in Christ. Mm -hmm. For by one spirit, you're all baptized into one body. And so we're members one of another. This peace, this unity is not something produced by men. It's rather preserved mm -hmm. by us. <clears throat> in Christ, we've been accepted. The proper view 
of this is that he hath made us accepted yes. in the beloved. Mm -hmm. He has put off the body of the sins of the flesh and given us his righteousness, making us acceptable to him. And so again, we ask, cometh this blessedness on the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? Hmm. Indeed, on the, on the us also. Amen. Amen. This is the work of God, and he has made it known to us. Just as Peter found out of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. God confirmed this to Peter. Uh, God, which knoweth the hearts, bear witness of them, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. To reject such a choice by God. God has made a determination. God has not made a distinction. It's wrong for men to make a distinction. That's right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> to require something else to be done in order for fellowship is to, to be lawful. I mean, this is to tempt God. You know, would, would we tempt God? Who are we to argue with God? If God has made a determination that he has accepted someone, we don't want to put a, a harder constraints on them That's right. in order to be accepted with us. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've been experienced that. I, I feel I have. <clears throat> Who shall lay a charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Yeah. Who is there that condemns? It is appropriate then that we recognize no one after the flesh. After all, the flesh profits nothing. Mm -hmm. Whether a man is circumcised or uncircumcised really is of no consequence. Uh, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creation. Mm -hmm. You see, you can't boast in your circumcision and you can't boast in your uncircumcision because they're in the flesh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both of them are in the flesh. We need the circumcision made with, without hands. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Jew is not to glory in his circumcision, nor the Gentile in his uncircumcision. No flesh should glory in his presence. Amen. But let him that glory, let him glory in the Lord. For you all are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. What a great salvation. See, this is, this, is all, this is all integral into the working out of God's eternal purpose. Yeah. The bringing, you see, God, God always had in view all nations. And so he's brought them together in a circumcision made without hands. And, and God has always had in view his glory and, and the exalting of his son. And so all the, all the, what a great salvation. What a, what a large work Christ has done. As God, as God has declared to him... It was a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee as a light to the nations that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. See, it's, 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 bigger, than, it's bigger than one nation. Yeah. And if we can see it correctly, the inclusion of the Gentiles, the imputation of righteousness to them also is primarily for, Je for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, our salvation, our sal we, we, no, no doubt we, we, we receive the benefits of it and we're, we're happy about it. Mm -hmm. But see, mm -hmm. this is to the glory of God. Yeah. And this is to the exaltation of Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like yeah. if we have that perspective, well then, then, we're, then, we're, then we can keep the building square. You know, this is a good foundation. Yeah. Uh, Christ himself. Mm -hmm. God has given them to him as an inheritance. This is the heritage of the Lord. Thus it's written, I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen as thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Men have become the heritage of the Lord, and they are called a holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and they shall be sought out a city not forsaken. You see, we, 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 the, the, the salvation is, is to the glory of God, and we need to partake of the benefits of it. We are not the only recipients of this blessedness. What I mean is that, is that it doesn't only please us. Mm -hmm. As a result of Christ's sacrifice and the travail of his soul, God himself is satisfied. Amen. Amen. And his Christ is worthy. Mm -hmm. For our salvation is to the praise of the glory of his grace. It is a public display to principalities and powers in heavenly places of the unparalleled wisdom of God. And thus we hear from John... He heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands saying in a loud voice, 
Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. See why? Because of this work that He has done. Yeah. That's the result of this work. Uh -huh. Here, here's my exhortation for you. You want an exhortation? Uh -huh. You want to say the same thing. Yeah. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, these are the things. This is, this is, it, see, it springs forth when, when these things kind of get a hold of you. That it's, just, it's just reasonable then to just praise the God of salvation. Yeah. Amen. And see, because we, so, we don't want to be outdone. We, we see the angels praising the Lord. Uh -huh. We see the, the, the beasts. We see everyone. We want to praise the Lord as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's built in. We want to give glory to God. And we were purchased by Him. We're the ones who were purchased by His precious blood. Mm -hmm. We were made to be kings and priests under our God. We, we don't want to be outdone. The loud pro proclamations of heaven resound from, from all demographics, if you want to use that term, yeah. to the glory of the God of salvation. You see, in heavenly places, there is stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, palms in their hands, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, mm -hmm. which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Amen. See, these are the implications of the circumcision of the 